A denial of service attack occurs when I try to generate so much traffic for a website that that website can't keep up and can't handle legitimate traffic. So attackers try to create lots of illegitimate requests for a particular site and use that to slow down the legitimate requests to the point where they can't be serviced. Now, this is possible, but very difficult to do with a single machine. So if I have a single machine over here, um, and I just try to generate lots of requests from that one machine to this site, um, not only are the number is the number of requests that I can generate limited by the bandwidth that this computer has, which might not give it enough uh, bandwidth to overwhelm the server, but it's also very easy to defend against because all the server has to do is see this huge uh, wave of traffic coming from one site or one source, one client, and say, this is not legitimate. I can tell that this is going on, and I'm going to start to rate limit so I can slow, I can force this guy to slow down. I can drop requests from that client. I can put a um, rule in my firewall to just not allow traffic from that client, whatever. So there's a bunch of different fairly standard and easy ways to defend against a denial of service attack coming from one particular machine. However, a lot of denial of service attacks today are what are called distributed denial of service attacks, or a DDoS, and those can be much, much harder to defend against. So in a distributed denial of service attack, what the attacker will do is it'll leverage access to lots of different computers on the internet. And this could be hundreds of computers, thousands of computers, tens of thousands of computers. And they will have all of those computers either all together, or maybe they take turns in different ways, generate uh, Ill illegitimate requests for this website. Um, so, you know, I have all these different computers generating all these requests, and, and this can be a lot more effective for two reasons. First of all, I can generate a lot more requests because I have a lot more bandwidth at the edge of the network that I'm using. The other reason is it's much more difficult for the site to detect this type of attack because on some level, if I'm careful about it, it can just look like a huge spike in traffic, like legitimate traffic. So. Uh, distributed denial of service attacks can be much, much harder to, to stop. You know, imagine that I need to, I'm trying to shut down these clients. So I shut down this one client and then there's still 10 more and I shut down another one and another one pops up over here. Um, and so this can be very, very difficult to defend against. Now, the obvious question is, how does an attacker get a hold of all these machines? So, you know, if, if I had a rich attacker, I might be able to rent all these machines on Amazon and something like that and, and, and launch this type of attack. But what's more common is that attackers use a previous hack to gain access to lots of machines to launch an attack like this. So uh, there's, there are these things called botnets. So a botnet is a bunch of computers on the internet that some uh, hacker has access to. Your computer might be one of those. So somehow that hacker has hacked into your laptop, maybe you clicked on something you weren't supposed to or installed some piece of uh, software that you thought would be really fun and in fact has all these Trojans on it and stuff like that. Um, but if your computer is part of a botnet, what will happen is that when the attacker tells it to launch this kind of attack, it will follow along. So it'll be part of an attack like this. You may not notice it at all. You may be just using the computer normally. The computer may be sitting under your desk or it may just be sitting on a table powered on and all of a sudden, the uh, hacker that has had access to your machine for a long time activates this feature and starts using it to launch traffic at a particular, uh, particular website. Um, there was actually a recent attack just a few days ago uh, that was one of the first times that uh, hackers used access to Internet of Things devices. So they didn't actually use computers, they used like, you know, internet connected toasters and refrigerators and home security systems and different types of internet uh, connected uh, peripherals that were not computers to launch this kind of attack. So that was one of the first times that happened. But in general, anything that's connected to the internet can make these kind of requests and has some sort of security vulnerability that hackers can exploit can be, become part of a botnet and then can be used to launch attacks like this. And these attacks can be really devastating um, because again, if I have lots of different machines, I can shift traffic around I can um, you know, overwhelm the site with enormous number of requests, and I can potentially bring sites offline. The recent attack that was just launched uh, actually brought large parts of the internet down for several days while uh, people figured out how to respond to this. Uh, so this type of attack can be very uh, dangerous, very devastating, and I'm sure we're going to be dealing with it for a long time.